Right. Hi, back from Makers. And it was a very interesting weekend. Let's put it that way. Um, so where do I start? Makers went very, very well for me. I don't know the exact number, but I think between Luke and myself, we made a hundred and forty, hundred and fifty mini mallets. Well, I say we, obviously everyone that came glued them all together, sanded them, finished them, but we were helping. And it was very, very popular. It was so popular, in fact, I didn't get to see anything else, which is a massive shame because I can't really say that I enjoyed Makers this year, not as much as in previous years, but that's because I was exhibiting. I couldn't get off the stand. Now, I'm not saying it was bad. Makers was very good. Now, they had a massive show this year. They had Colin Furs, the Hacksmith. They had Kids Invent stuff. They had the Carpenter's Daughter. Uh, proper DIY, Matt Easley, 10 Minute Workshop, to name a few. And it was a massive show. It's just a shame that I didn't get to see anyone. And that's my own fault. So my initial plan for Maker Central was let's get this fairly big stand. Let's put all of the weapons that I make on it. So the giant hammer, the clown mallet, the big axe, the swords that were for the giveaway of prizes the uh, long sword that I eventually ended up giving away, the kunai, my mallets, and obviously Ollie's sword as well. So I'd have that at one side, and then I'd have the mallets and things on sale, and then I'd have a little table for the mini mallet builds. I didn't expect the mini mallet builds to be as popular as they were, and that is 100% my oversight. Of course, kids being able to fully make one of the, well, I say kids, people, because there was a lot of adults doing it as well. People being able to fully make one of these is massively desirable. I, I wasn't charging much and they could pick everything on it, glue it together, we'd shape it, they'd sand it, and then they'd finish it. What more would you want as a memory of the show? Oh, well, I made the thing! And the kids were so excited about that. So it was my naiveness that meant I didn't plan well. So I brought my friend Luke with me. Uh, he was there just to help me build it. I assumed that I would be able to leave him to do some of the mini mallets because there'd be a few people there. And then I could sell the hammers. I can talk to people about the big weapons, about YouTube, go and meet people, get lots of pictures, all of those fun things that I didn't end up doing. In reality, we got there at about eight o'clock in the morning to finish uh, making some of the handles that I didn't get to finish in time before. Set the stool up properly, get everything ready, and, and then they just started coming in. You had the early bird people getting in at half past nine for being a member of How To and Maker Central, and then everyone else coming in at 10. And as soon as people saw what we were doing, there was a queue, and we didn't get to stop. I've had quite a few people say, oh, you know, Colin's queue was massive, and these queues were massive. But I've had a lot of people say, my queue, if you put it together, was actually bigger. I was just working through it faster. So what I should have done was had at least one more person. I shouldn't have brought half of these with me. I should have brought a few and had them on, attached to the wall and things like that. And then I should have had at least two tables for the mini mallet build. A lumberjack were nice enough to lend me their cast iron router table and their belt and disc sander. Without them, it would have been impossible, but I needed at least two more of those machines, one each, in order to have the turnover that would have been good. So yeah, I can't really tell you what was going on at the show, to be honest. The two days were manic, and I was quite literally dead on my feet by the end of day one. You can see in this lovely clip here from the morning after of how bad my voice was. I can't talk. And that was after I'd woken up a while as well. It got a little bit better day two, but then it just pretty much by the end of day two, I was gone. And again, I'm not complaining. This turned out very well for me. Selling 140, 150 mini mallets is brilliant. I managed to sell five or six of these. I did give a few of them away, but some of the big YouTubers now have my mallet, which hopefully 
they will put on display or post about, I don't know, but you never know. The weapons went down really well. There are so many pictures, I've put a few on now. There are so many pictures of people with the mallets. I haven't been tagged in all of them, but I'm sure there are more people holding the ax and the hammer. And I can't be happier that they got a chance to do that. So take away from all of this. I have to do it differently next year. If I'm gonna do something next year, I'm gonna either have to have more people, more machines, and less space for selling stuff, or I do a workshop or something. I don't know, I'll have to ask makers what they think I should do. But if I don't do that, I'm gonna have to just go as a person again. And now that I've been an exhibitor, I don't know whether I can do that, to be honest. Now, if I was gonna be an ambassador on a stall or something, more than happy to do something. But if I'm gonna do it again, I have to do things differently. I have to plan lunch breaks because we didn't get a lunch break for two days, basically. We had some of our amazing Instagram and YouTube friends come over and just give us water. Brothers Make came over, gave us both water because they could see we were working so hard. Dean Makes and Kat, without them, I, I probably would have lost my mind halfway through because they were writing signs for me to shut the shop while I'm in the middle of making things. It was a whale of a time, but it was also absolute hell. So yeah, gonna have to do things differently next year. That's if I, do, I don't know, I still haven't made my mind up. Dates for next year have been announced now. So it's the 17th and 18th of May next year. So it could work, it could work. So I've gotta give a few shout outs to people now. So Dan, Rasmus and Heidi, they do the Setting Up Shop podcast. Without them, I wouldn't have done the stall. Listening to their podcast, literally listening to that first teaser episode of a podcast made me want to do the stall. Okay, next shout out is to Urchan. Our account on Instagram is all about weather work and things like that, but she was lucky enough to win the raffle on the first day and get the amazing sword that I made. And she was chuffed about it. But without her and her friend at the show, I think we would have probably passed out in the first half, half an hour because she just kept feeding us water. And they are amazing and they were really helpful and they're lovely and I can't thank them enough. You've also got Brothers Make. They, again, fed us water. You know, I can't thank these people enough. Dave G went and found me a rubber because I left my rubber block to clean the sanding belt. He went and found me a rubber. Very expensive rubber, mind you, but he found me one. Matt from DIY Wannabe. And there's so many more that I can't thank enough for their support during the show. Soapy, I Jessa, Dan that was on the Make, Make With Makers stand. All of those guys, I can't thank them enough for the support for the weekend because they were literally just over the stand row from me. And they were so supportive, they could see that we were getting run under and tried to help the best they can. So I did manage to see a few things. So I did see Colin Furs, saw him on the, the Friday afternoon when he was setting up and we were setting up, saw him on the, sat on the Sunday morning, gave him a nice Paduke and chestnut mallet, didn't get a picture with him. He held the giant hammer, again, didn't get a picture with him. Saw the hacksmith, which was amazing. Got a picture with him, definitely got a picture with him but I didn't really get any pictures with anyone else. And that is half of my issue with this year's show. And that is what's made me sad and what's made me doubt myself a little bit when it comes to the stand. Because I didn't get to spend time with the people that I wanted to spend time with, which for me is the whole point of going to the show. It was great to meet all the people. It was great to make mini mallets with them, but I, I probably will never see them again. These guys I speak to nearly every week. Sean from Sean in the Shed, hardly even saw. I gave him his mallet. And then I didn't really see him again because he was out having fun, meeting people. And I was stuck on a stool. But anyway, oh, haven't talked about the chap that won the ax on day two. He was one of the guys that was actually part of the Droid UK stand. I think he put about 30 quid in to win this. That's dedication that is. And I think he loves it. Only barely saw Nick, Nick Zametti. Hardly even saw him at all. Didn't spend much time with the guys from Surrey Timbers. Saw them, but not. Didn't get to buy any of their beautiful Paduke Thins, which I need for the knives. So I'm gonna have to get them to send me some. I didn't even get my how-to members welcome pack. God, that stings more than anything else. So overall, 
Great weekend. Lots of mini mallets sold. So, like I said, sort of six of these. But I still have at least 30 odd left. And because of that, I'm gonna honor the prices from Maker Central. So by the end of play on Sunday, I had, if you were subscribed to YouTube and Instagram, about a 35% discount on the hammers. And they are beautiful hammers. The handles and the heads are just amazing. This chestnut one, for example, is gorgeous. So I'm gonna honor those show prices for the next, let's say, two months. So for the next two months, if you go onto my website, brookswoodbuilds.com, it's at the bottom there. You can pick up one of these lovely, lovely Thor blacksmith style hammers. The benefit of me honoring that price, but being at home, is that I'm offering customization options for you. So if you've got a message or a logo that you wanna put on the other side of the hammer, I will do that for you. Prices are all on the website, say I'm honoring the show price. There's a customization option there for you as well. I have had one sell since I've been back at the show price. So check my website, pick up a hammer while you can. This is literally the only mini mallet that I have left. And I believe it is on the website. So this, I believe, is a Roco. So that's me signing off from what is a somewhat successful makers for me. But I need to think what I'm doing next year. And I've got a few phone calls to make, a few buddies to ask who might help me on my stand if I ask them nicely. I know one of them's never been before, but I've got to speak to them. I've got to speak to Maker Central and I've got to work out what I'm doing next year. And I've got to book holiday because God knows I'm not missing it. So I'm going to head off. Make sure you check out the website for the 35% discount on all the hammers and have a look what else I've got on there. Some beautiful merch, my brand new t-shirt looks like this, but with all the silhouettes of the beautiful big weapons that I've made over the past couple of years. So check it out. Don't know why I'm holding this. It's empty. It's never had anything in it. So yeah, I'm gonna go. You're gonna go on my website and buy some hammers and I'll see you later. If you haven't liked, subscribed and shared, please do that. I'm so close to a thousand, and when I get to a thousand, I'll be doing a sword build giveaway for you guys. So, uh, soon you get me there, soon you can have one of my fabulous swords. But go check out all of the people that I've linked in the description below. Go check out all the hammers. There's plenty of people that I haven't tagged or I haven't said. So, please go and check all of them out. They are the most amazing people in the world. And if I don't see you before, I'll hopefully see you at the next show. Toodaloo! I need some sleep till I'm caught up.